Hi everybody. So far, we've been using properties quite a bit, but we haven't really been using them to, I guess, their full potential. Just like many things in JavaScript, there's a lot of detail, a lot of depth that we can get into. And one such detail about properties that I want to cover in this video is something known as getters and setters. Now here's what makes them interesting. So far, there are two types of properties that you can use in JavaScript. The kind that we've been using so far are known as data properties. They are the vanilla everyday kind that we've been seeing where here's an example, you have an object called foo, and it has two properties, a property called a, whose value is a text hello, and another property called b, whose value is a text Monday. And the way we would read the value is by just doing foo.a. And then the way we can set the value of this property, if we wanted to change it, is by doing foo.a equals whatever value you want it to be. In the case of this example, it is the word manic. And so those are really the kind of how we've been using properties so far. But imagine as part of using these properties, right? What if we had the ability to first maintain our existing, existing syntax for reading and writing property values. And second, we also gain the ability to run some custom code behind the scenes as part of reading and setting a property value. That would be pretty cool, right? Well, as it turns out, we do have the ability to do both those things. It is brought to us by another kind of property variant known as an accessor property. So data properties that we've been looking at before, Access of properties are the ones that give us those two abilities that we've been kind of looking for. And so here's another example. We have an object called Zorb. It has a property called message. And there are two functions here that say greeting and set greeting and get greeting. So, you know, a little bit interesting there. Let's look into them in more detail. So the property message, that is your typical data property that we've been always working with. It's just a property, nothing too fancy about that. Now the access of properties though, those are the ones that you see highlighted here. The get greeting function and the set greeting function. These are the ones that are kind of special and kind of new. And here's what makes them kind of interesting. The interesting part is this, is that we don't access the greeting functions basically, get and set, as a function itself. We access it just like we would any old property. So if you want to set the value for greeting, all we would do is absorb that greeting equals, in this case, Ola. And then to read the value, we just do console.log and then access the value directly. Now, go back to this again. See what makes it a little bit strange. This doesn't look like your typical property, right? It looks kind of like a function call, yet we're using it just like a, a property. And that's what makes it kind of interesting. And that's where the names getter and setter come from. So when we try to read the value of an access property, in this case, absorb that greeting, the getter function is what gets called, the lines four through six that are currently highlighted. And similarly, when we're setting the value to our accessor property, the, in the case of Zorbnet greeting equals Ola, the setter function is what gets called. That's where the names setters and getters really come from. And the power of them really lies in that the code we're executing when we can read or write to these properties because we're dealing with functions under the covers. And as functions go, we can run any code that we want. So before with data properties, you could set a value, read a value, that's pretty much it. But with access of properties, because we can run code as part of reading and setting a value, we have a lot of power and flexibility on what we can do. So here's an example. Here's something like the shout generator. We have a shout object. We have a data accessor property called, sorry, there's a data property called message. And then we have two functions here, get message, set message, or getters and setters. And notice what happens here. When we are setting the message, you know, you have set message equals in the value argument is what is the equal part of the actual property setting. You notice that we're setting the value to, to uppercase. So it's not gonna be a lowercase value, it's gonna be an uppercase value as part of us setting it. And when you're reading it, we're just returning the value of message as it's currently stored. So you can see here when you shout that message equals this is Sparta, if we do console.log shout that message, can you imagine what gets shown? You will still see this is Sparta, but what will get shown though is this is Sparta entirely in uppercase, value that to uppercase. Now, this is something that we couldn't really do with data properties before because when we used to set the value of message to this is Sparta, the value would just be set. There'd be no custom code running, or there's no custom code that we can kind of intercept and modify easily. Whereas by using getters and setters, we can now modify the value to uppercase without any challenges or any issues there. And 
What makes it even more exciting is that behind the scenes, let's say at some point, we had to go from to uppercase to go to to lowercase. If we did that, with the way you would still use the message property, the way you'd set a value to it, will never change. The way you'd use it, you know, if you think of it as like an API, the access point that you use to set the value will still be the same. Behind the scenes though, we could have done a whole lot of different things to modify that how the value goes. So this kind of creates a more maintainable system if the goal is to create something that will probably be changing a lot under the covers. Another example is logging activity. Here we have an object called super secure terminal. And the interesting part is what the get and set getters and setters here are doing. Every time we set the username, notice that we set the username by you know, having the underscore username data property set to the name we provide, but we also have an array. We have an array called all usernames that we add the name that we are adding to. So if we were to create a new object called super secure terminal, and then start adding names to it, I can always call the show history function and see a list of all the names that have been currently provided. Again, something that is easily done where all I'm doing is just getting and setting the username, but behind the scenes, some extra things are going on behind the scenes. So now you're probably wondering, should I ever not use accessor properties? I mean, they seem like they're very convenient. Why would I ever use a data property to begin with? Well. That's really a personal choice, really. And if what you're doing is storing something very simple and you don't ever anticipate it changing, adding an access property is more like the code, a little bit of extra overhead, and you generally just want to avoid those kind of things. But if you will be writing code that will be changing or it's part of a more complex application, then using getters and setters is great because it gives you a certain level of fine-grained control over what you know what data gets returned even if it's not on the first day you've written the code at some point later you can return you can change what gets returned or change how the value gets set to the property and the way the, the rest of your application still interacts with that property will never have to change because this would have been an under the covers change and not something that would have changed how the the public functionality of it would be exposed so with that if you have any questions post in the forums at forum.group.com where some of the nicest friendliest, smartest people out there will reply to your questions very, very quickly. Try not to post on YouTube or on the comments on Facebook and Twitter, mostly because I don't check them quite enough and the volume of them is quite large as well. So I might not be able to get to them in time. If you found this particular video interesting, tell your friends and enemies all about getters and setters. Hit subscribe to be notified of cool new videos that might be coming in the same vein, either it's JavaScript or animation, something web development related. Follow me at Karupa on Twitter and Facebook. You know, Twitter and Facebook, I tend to post a lot of interesting things that I find on the net, not just stuff that I create, and occasionally pictures of my cat and daughter. So subscribe for all those things. And lastly, if you found this material so exciting that you want to carry it along with you on the bus or on a train or a plane, something that is, I don't know, that you can carry things onto, buy a version of this book called JavaScript. Absolute Beginner's Guide, the new edition is out, where we talk about getters, setters, and the whole host of things that go all around it. So with that, I will see you all next time.